When times were tough and my daughter was in near constant blares from histamine and mast cell activation syndrome, I would have given anything to know that there was someone else like us and that they successfully healed themselves. In hindsight, looking back from where we are now, I've identified a few phases of healing, and today I'm going to be using a boating analogy. So hang in there with me. I hope it'll just give you some more visual context instead of talking about stuff that might not be necessarily the most fun to talk about. So while I'm here to talk to you today about what I did in the healing process, I want to first talk a bit about the before the sickness phase. For me, it could have easily been described as autopilot. I set the compass towards where I thought we were going, and then I just lived my life without much thought of the environment or the foods that I or my family consumed. In the dark days of chaos within my body or my daughter's body, it's easy to look back and miss those autopilot days. However, true freedom comes from consciously charting the course and not just enjoying the ride while ignoring the warning signs. Before there were full-fledged flares, there were hives and blotches on her face and body. There were also GI signs, excessive spit-up, extreme fussiness. I looked to the doctors who dismissed my concerns and said that allergies can't even be detected until closer to her first birthday. So I had months of just dealing with it until then. In reflecting on this very phase, it reminded me of a 2005 commencement speech titled, This is water that David Foster Wallace gave to the graduating class at Kenyon College, which is a timeless trove of wisdom. I have actually bought it in book form for a number of college graduates since I heard about it. He opens the speech with a catchy parable and a visual example that even connects to our boat theme for today. It goes like this. There are these two young fish swimming along, and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way, who nods at them and says, Morning, boys. How's the water? And the two young fish swim on for a bit. And then eventually one of them looks at the other and goes, what the hell is water? He later states, the point of the fish story is merely that the most obvious, most important realities are often the ones that are the hardest to see and talk about. This is the most relevant part of our conversation today, because the reality is if we are looking at our health and wellness, we don't even understand how our bodies truly work on a physical, emotional, or energetic level. It's the water that we swim in every day. It's the things that we can't see with our naked eye that are in the air, the water, the earth, and all around us that they're hardest to talk about. I constantly worry about sharing information, crossing the line, and just triggering fear or overwhelm in others in my position, or potentially being labeled as just another paranoid granola mom or whatever the latest insult is. This is likely why these things aren't talked about until they can't be ignored. If we imagine our bodies as boats, the reality is, is we likely are all riding a little bit low in our own ways. Our framework is made up of our ancestral inheritance via epigenetics, childhood experience, any dirty genes we've accumulated, and the load that we carry on board our boat is made up of the food we consume, the allergies, nutritional balance, quality of environment, toxin load, hormone balance, traumas, and a variety of other stressors. If the load is too heavy for too long, it can cause structural integrity issues and degradation of important parts of our boats or bodies that keep us afloat. These are the things that are important to true, holistic health and wellness, and the things that our primary care physicians do not ask about or talk about. The first real phase in healing, along with addressing any real issue in your life, is awareness. The first, oh sh- moment is when we realized that we were taken on water and we had a serious problem was just after her first birthday. I've talked about this story before, so feel free to go back and watch this playlist for more details if you want to hear what really happened. We were in chaos for about two months during this awareness of a problem while being passed around from pediatrician to allergist with no hope in sight. They didn't understand or seem to want to figure out what chaos was happening in her body. During this two-month period, there was a lot of fear and guilt. Given that the reactions were her GI tract and re- reacting to all foods, we felt horrible for feeding her because something was making her so sick and in pain. The key part of how to get out of this phase for us was when we realized that no one was coming to save us. We had to take our matters into our own hands to reach out to our community and see if others had been through a similar situation. 
Hi there, Future Monique here. I was just editing this video and I wanted to pop in to say that if you're looking for a community working to heal children with some connection to histamine intolerance or mast cell issues, I created a Facebook group called Kids with Histamine and Mast Cell Issues Integrative Parent Support, since nothing like that existed when I needed it. And I just wanted to say, you are not alone. You're welcome in our community, and you can find us with a quick search on Facebook. The answer and real awareness of what we were dealing with actually came from me taking three deep breaths and Googling seemingly random reactions until I found that the key to the next step, the thing that triggers her and that all of her triggers had in common was histamine. And all of a sudden, knowing one piece of the puzzle, we entered into phase one of healing. This phase is pure survival mode. The chaos now has a name. The more you learn about it, the more confused you get. The truth is when you're in chaos, you can't think clearly or plan. You're just in survival mode. And when your boat is taking on water, the first priority is to find a way to stop taking on water. For us, the survival phase was focused heavily on diet. If food seemed to be the things that were making her feel terrible, I figured it wouldn't hurt to cut all of those high histamine foods out that I thought were healthy for her, like strawberries, bananas, avocado, and it only took a few days to see a difference, and we were over the moon. I joined a histamine intolerance support group to learn as much as I could. I quickly saw that those who seemed to have the most success were those who saw a functional medicine or holistic doctor. I called around for a long time and scanned long lists of holistic doctors. I finally reached out and found one in late April who'd be willing to see my daughter. However, I pushed off that appointment because it seemed as if we could control her symptoms with diet. Seeing her symptoms go away took the urgency I felt to find help off the plate. Then one day she started flaring again, even with her low histamine diet, and I was brainstorming with a friend who really understood this for different reasons, and she asked about the oats we were using and if they were gluten-free. Well, that opened up a whole other can of worms, which I won't get into today, but it allowed us to get back to a calm-ish state at home. Things changed when we took a long road trip to see family, even on a low histamine diet, she had a major flare, and this led me to believe that there were other triggers, not just food, and there was a chance of mast cell issues, and I was out of my league there, and I needed help. In July of that year, I reached out and got an appointment scheduled for August. I want to take a moment before I talk about our teammates to discuss the theme of control the controllables. When we were in survival, I had a lot of fear and anxiety over each and every food. Even when a food was on a list that should be safe, I was so anxious to give her something new, fearing it would trigger a flare and cause her more pain. There was so much focus on controlling the food. Honestly, this is a perfect environment for disordered eating, thinking we must maintain this rigidity for our whole lives moving forward. If we are doing good enough and if we are disciplined enough, she will be healthy, I will be healthy. We as adults shame, guilt, and blame ourselves for our issues. If we fear that it's because we had that one coffee or wine or dessert that we're now flaring, then it becomes a moral issue that we are flaring because we're not good enough. These emotions will block your progress. The reality is, is that dilate is simply like putting your finger in the hole. It isn't a sustainable solution for the long term. Just like a restrictive diet is a house of cards, the more you take away, the more loose the structure is and easy to cave in. In hindsight, I call this four month phase shifting to neutral. It allowed us to reach a somewhat okay-ish position so that we could think and act clearly to the best we could. The second phase, call in reinforcements. And I think this is really important. When we get let down by medical professionals, it's easy to give up on them. But perhaps maybe that's just your way of being nudged towards trying a holistic or functional medicine doctor, or perhaps to trusting your intuition to find the right one for you, because they're not all made the same. Likewise, there might be a functional medicine health coach who can help you navigate all the different people who could be helping to diagnose or find a solution for you. There's lots of other healthcare professionals such as chiropractors or general practitioners where it might pop up that they might be a good fit because they're willing to help you navigate the healing process. The most important part in thinking about this healing team is what is your role? The key to true success is to taking ownership of your health and wellness and being the captain of your ship. 
See what I did there? There's lots of crew members that can come on board. There's lots of healers and support staff and people that can help you be resilient to stress, others that can help you figure out um, sensitivities to frequencies. There's lots of different teammates that could really help you depending on your unique situation. Even considering getting water testing to check into the quality of your water or food, what have you. Those types of people are also teammates in your healing journey. And if I might be so bold to say, I might even be considered a teammate if you've watched a couple of my videos. For anyone that you seek out for inspiration, guidance is part of that team. But it's your job to trust your intuition to navigate everyone towards your goal and vision and advocate for yourself. Hi there, I'm popping in again here just to remind you of the benefit and pitfalls of online communities. These communities are certainly important teammates. However, some groups are designed to provide guidance and hope by sharing what has worked outside of pharmaceuticals. However, when you get a large group of people together, you can see that some people just want company in their misery and believe this is their future for the rest of their life. If you are watching this because you feel the truth vibrate through your body when I say healing is possible, then I strongly urge you to protect your energy. If you hear there is no cure, there is no hope often enough, you just might convince yourself that there is no end in sight. Trust your intuition and find new groups and communities aligned towards your wellness goals. And that's just my two cents. We can't let those low vibrations and our history of being dismissed or unheard stop us from an integrated approach that combines traditional with perhaps holistic or integrative in some way, shape, or form. So I decided to trust this holistic doctor that pushed me a little bit outside my comfort zone, and that took me to phase three. And this is the one that I call Do the Work, where we bailed out her sinking ship one bucket at a time. During this bailout phase, there were occasional flares and symptoms, and we would patch that hole and move on to the next. And honestly, it felt overwhelming. Why are there so many holes? When will it end? Where did they come from and how did I not notice them before? And this is where it's really key to try to get to the root cause. A lot of times people will try different supplements and regimens that are working for other people. And I hope you're not coming here today to try to find what my regimen was that worked for us that you can take this magic set of pills because it doesn't exist. Really the key is to get to what's off balance for you. There are six main imbalances that are well known in one modality called body code. If you want to dabble your toe in a holistic or integrative approach without necessarily going all in on functional medicine, it might be good to find a local body code practitioner as that's actually something that my holistic doctor is certified in, but you could find a teammate who can help you navigate and look at the big picture of what could possibly be off because it even looks into things like emotions that can get trapped in the body, which is well documented about in books like The Body Keeps Score. I don't believe there's one protocol that I can share with you that would work for all. And that's why you really need the teammates who you can trust to, to look at the big integrative picture. We worked on mitigating risk of EMF or Bluetooth sensitivity to help calm her system down. We worked on using emotional freedom techniques to help her be resilient when she's stressed or activated. Many, many things. We even went to a chiropractor to make sure she was nice and aligned. And so really, we tried many different things, and that's just a really short list of what we did over those months. But it was kind of like peeling an onion. You would get to one layer, resolve that, and another layer would come up. And so the other important thing to note is using homeopathic remedies. Since we had a daughter who was so sensitive, it was really common whenever we would give her a new remedy that for a day or two, things would get almost worse before they'd get better. And so I just really trusted deep in my soul, my intuition that told me this is the right path, keep going on. And it would resolve really quickly and she would be better and better each time. And so that's one thing to note is that progress isn't always linear. It's not take this one pill and you're all done. It's a roller coaster where you just have to play the long game because again, there is no finish line to health and wellness. And so we still would have occasional flares as we would learn new things. Additionally, from eliminating so much, she then became sensitive to salicylic. So we had to eliminate even more because we lean too heavily on that category of food. So other intolerances can come up as you do elimination diets. And that's why it's really important to have a better integrated 
well-rounded diet once you reach the next phase. So from August to January of 2022, about five or six months or so, we were in this doing the work one bucket at a time, one step forward, one step back, two steps forward. And it felt really long in the moment. But looking back and seeing that it only took us about six months or so to we're like, wow, it seems like she's pretty normal. Wow. I don't think I've seen her flare in a while to all of a sudden nine months later. And wow, I don't think she's flared at all this year. And that's incredible from how dark and how bad it felt when we had no clue what was going on. And that brings us to phase four. And this is the, is this the new normal phase? Around the time when we wrapped up a lot of the underlying conditions, I had begun doing a lot of research on genetics and epigenetics and what genetic mutations that I had inherited that likely she did as well. And in doing so, I was able then to optimize myself and we were able to optimize her, right? So some people run right to the optimization before they've healed, released, and cleared out underlying conditions. And so that's why there is no shortcut to healing. I think resolving the root conditions and then optimizing things so that your body can handle any type of toxins or immune response or anything like that, that can process them naturally through your body's mechanism of doing that. And whenever anything comes up, you can just support that, minimize histamine and go back in. So in this new normal phase, I'm able to give her things that I typically would highly avoid. Um, Just the other day, we did canned tuna with an avocado oil mayo, and it was just so exciting. She loved it and asked for more. I feel so excited to incorporate new things into her diet, and I always, always reinforce every meal the whole entire way. I would always say, listen to your body. Your body knows what it needs. And there are some things that she'll put to her mouth and she'll put down, and I trust her in that. I never make her eat anything because I think it's so important that our littles and we listen to our bodies and tune into what is best for us because the things that we think are good might not necessarily be the best. And so I think it's all about having everything in moderation and finding new normal moving forward. That being said, I'm not throwing all caution to the wind and eating all kinds of GMO gluten and things like that, right? We control what we can control in the home within reason. And then we can be flexible when we're out traveling. And if there's pizza somewhere, she can have that regardless of if it's gluten-free or not. And it doesn't trigger her or cause a reaction, which is really incredible. And I think that's something to really share with people and hopefully give hope that it doesn't have to be this regimented and restrictive forever. And I think there are people who do get caught in that cycle and feel that way. So in hindsight, I really feel strongly that the keys to our healing progress and where we are today is that I let go of the fear and blame, thanks to a lot, a lot of time spent in hypnosis with hypnotherapists. And secondly, just really trusting my intuition. And thirdly is being empowered, be empowered to be the captain of our team and figuring out what was going on. And I hope those three things can inspire you to do the same. And if you have any questions or feedback, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below so that I can make sure that I'm creating content that's helpful and insightful to you. And until the next time, I hope you are doing well, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.